You guys need to see behind us here. <laughs> We're surrounded by whales right now. Can't even move from this spot. For this adventure, I'm excited to say that I'm partnering up with Baja Expeditions and we're setting out to pursue one of the most unique wild animal encounters on Earth. For the next four days, this is home. Located within Latin America's largest wildlife refuge, this is Baja Expedition's boat access only camp, dedicated entirely to whale watching. But truthfully, this is far more than a camp. And if we're lucky, we'll be doing far more than just watching whales. This is the only place in the world where gray whales choose to interact with humans and enjoy the attention. Throughout my travels, I've seen hundreds of whales, but never have I had the opportunity to interact like this until today. Welcome to camp, everybody. Though I'm not sure you can call this camping. <laughs> Before we get into some activities, let me show you Mikasa. Our ambition is to bring people in who've never thought of seeing the whales or they don't want to share a bathroom with 26 other people or 20 other people. And so we've brought in a level of comfort so that people are not roughing it out here. And it's the first time it's been done. We've got glamping, we've got luxury, we've got big tents and medium sized tents. Everything's got private bathrooms and showers and hot and cold running water, heat in the tents, real beds and fine linen and fine dining and so on. We're on the north side of the lagoon where no one's ever camped before. It's incredibly difficult. Everything comes across by Panga. You know, we're burning wa water for 46 people in camp, plus about 25 uh, uh, staff. And every liter of water gets uh, pumped into a tank in a Panga, brought across here and pumped into a transfer tank. We're in the middle of a biosphere reserve. This is the uh, Viscano National uh, Park. And we're actually in a section of it that is very, very difficult to uh, gain access to. We have a limited number of days that we can be here, and everything that's here has to come out. This is a flooding salt flat that we're camping on. It floods to a depth of 8 to 10 inches, which is super, but it's also a bit of a logistical challenge. You can see everything is on uh, double concrete blocks and, and pallets and so on, because that's how high the water goes. There's 3,500 pallets here. There's many, many thousands of concrete blocks. There's kitchen. Everything is, everything has to come out. Not a trace that we were ever here. And that's uh, not just our permit requirement, but it's also our respect for the, for the area. This camp is uh, a continuation, next generation of Baja Expeditions. So the whole concept of ecotourism is to be very low footprint, to be good for the animals, good for the people, support the local economy. And that's what this is. So this is a joint cooperation between our company, Baja Expeditions, and the local panga captains, the local fishermen, the local uh, people in the village, the local aircraft operator. Of course, more than anything, it's about the whales sharing and interacting with us. So from camp, just over here, there's a bunch of mangroves and I know it's a great place to do some wildlife viewing and they have kayaks over there so I'll walk over and just see what our options are. There's a path here like a canal, a water path. <laughs> oh my god it goes way in. Okay <laughs> this is awesome we gotta paddle this. <laughs> Crash landing. This is so exciting. Oh my god. Pretty happy actually that we're doing this at low tide. Feels like you're paddling through a tunnel being below the mangrove leaves 
and you can see all the life in here like look at this right here on the bottom of that mangrove that's an oyster right there this place is just so beautiful can just dove right right behind me <laughs> like right on the tail of the kayak that pelican dove this is so crazy in here it's looking like things are about to get a little more difficult here i gotta get through there though it opens up again a little bit of a struggle here no biggie <sighs> Oh yeah, we're through. <laughs> oh yeah. In the end, that last little tough passage, not really worth it. It only went like another 20 feet. I can see the end here. I'm loving this though. What a beautiful nature experience. I think my kayak's gonna be too long to turn around in here. Oh no. Oh, that boot's really far in the mud. <laughs> Can you believe it? We did it. Oh, I can hardly believe it. Come here, paddle. Once the tide comes in, all these fish that are stuck in here, they'll be able to get out. But this channel is just full of them. I'll be paddling along and then all of a sudden the whole water underneath me just changes color and it's a massive school of fish swimming. Oh, they're big. I'm sure it's hard to tell on the GoPro, but those are good sized fish right there. No idea what kind they would be. I feel like that's an experience that probably most people that come to this camp don't take advantage of. I loved that. I'm also soaking wet and muddy now. <laughs> It is our first day of whale watching. We were up bright and early before the sun. It's turned into a beautiful day now. The wind has calmed way down. Stoked to get out there, get on a boat and find some whales. This is an immersive experience that these animals grant us. It is I would say the most unique whale experience on this planet. I was not a whale guy. I'm a liveaboard dive boat guy. I was a captain on the liveaboards for a long time and now I, we run a fleet of liveaboard dive boats. I love sharks and I love mantas. That's what I want to do. I spend my time diving with sharks and mantas. Last year we set camp up here. It's our, my first time to have a camp here, and of course, first thing I have to do is go out and see the gray whales. I was so wrong about the experience. My first encounter is etched in my brain until I die. Oh my God. We were out there in the panga, and there was a big mama, a female gray whale. She was probably 20, 25 feet away. Okay, that's nice. And she looked at me. They say you can see God in the eye of a gray whale. And she looked at me and she sent me a very clear message. I'm gonna trust you with my baby. Don't mess up. I was like, okay. 
and then she pushed the baby into the side of the boat. It's not gratuitous, oh, I wonder if I can reach out and manage to touch this whale. It's a whale's coming in, just like your dog or your puppy comes in, and it wants you to give it some affection. A very good question is, why are these whales choosing to interact with us? Is it curiosity? Is there some sort of survival strategy? You know, I can be complete nut bar and say that the year that Pacheco reached out to the uh, first whale was 1972. In 1972 was when the International Whaling Commission uh, banned whaling. The Marine Mammal Protection Act was in 1972. That's when we got serious about protecting marine mammals. That's when the whales first reached out to us. So the reason for the interaction, it, it, I think it's, it's across the spectrum from potentially something that's far beyond our comprehension that we can't understand, which is somehow they knew that uh, we had changed and that we were, instead of killing them, we were going to protect them to maybe they like getting their tummies scratched. What we do know is that the whale behavior has changed. What we do know for sure is that because the whales live 50, 60, 70 years, and because whales were actively hunted on this coast up until right through the 1960s, that there's whales here who have a memory of being hunted. And yet despite that, they're willing to trust us. I think that there's sometimes things in life that you can't explain and you just have to accept for what it is and find great joy in the experience. Getting back from this trip and going through my footage, it was obvious almost immediately that there's not a shot in the world that can properly portray what this experience is actually like. So I'm just gonna tell you guys what it was like for me. Leaving camp, there's about a 20 minute boat ride to get out to where you're actually allowed to stop and interact with the whales, but you start seeing whales almost immediately. Some of the different behaviors that you see is of course the spouts and breaching. Some of it is whales just playing with each other. Some is part of their mating rituals and some has no explanation at all. One of the behaviors that I thought was really interesting, I'd never heard of it before, is something called spy hopping. That's when the whale positions itself vertically with its nose sticking out of the water. Some people say that's so that the whale can spin and scan its entire surroundings for a mate. One of the reasons that the whales come to the lagoon is for mating. And if you're really lucky, you'll get to see part of the mating process, which is really a fascinating thing with gray whales because they do it, believe it or not, in groups. There's one female and two or more males. The alpha male is the one that's going to be actually mating, and the other whales are just there to help position the couple tummy to tummy and then brace the female for the actual mating process. But most of the whales you see are just floating at the surface and relaxing. When the Ponga driver spots a group of whales on the surface, he'll slowly get close with the boat and put it in neutral. And at that point, it's up to the whales if they want to approach the boat. And it's up to us to encourage the whales to come over. So we put on all kinds of presentations. We are splashing and cheering and singing. And most of the time, the whales just ignore us. But sometimes you seem to entertain them enough to come over for a visit. Throughout my time on this expedition, I had about nine hours on the water and more than a dozen opportunities to directly interact with whales right at the boat. One of the guests described the whales as being like cats, and that's a perfect way to describe it because most of them will get right up to the boat, but just not close enough for you to touch them. But my first day, we had a baby come and play with the boat, and the babies are just like puppy dogs. They love to come up and splash around and get attention. And we had this one come up to us and it would stick its whole head out of the water and just spin in circles while everyone scratched its chin and its nose. And then it would go to the other side and do the same thing back and forth. And it stayed with us for probably about five minutes like that. 
but my best luck actually came on the very last day, on the very last outing. We were the only boat on this section of lagoon and it started out as just one whale coming up to the boat for some attention and a few minutes later another one came and then another one came and at one point we had five full grown adult whales surrounding our boat, boxing us in to the point where the Ponga driver just shut off the boat and he said we're staying here now and those whales stayed with us for more than an hour. It was definitely the most powerful experience of the trip for me, one of the most powerful experiences of my life. So I wanna give a great big thank you to Baja Expeditions for having me out. And if you guys want this experience, I cannot recommend that company enough. But most of all, thanks for watching everybody. As always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints. I'll catch you on the next one.